Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Jeffrey and you're welcome to the Inquisitive Universe. So in today's video, I want to talk about eFootball. What you need to know about eFootball, the specs, the requirements, and basically everything. I'm going to go straight into it. I'm not going to beat about the bush. I'm doing this because I already have an earlier video, but I don't think I explained it well enough. So I still keep getting questions about this topic. Like, bro, how far? Um, my phone does not play football, what can I do? Or I want to get a phone that can play football, what should I look out for? Those are like, most of the questions fall into these two categories. So that's why I am making this video, yeah, to clear things up. It's very important that I do so. So let's get into the video straight away. All right, yeah, so that's it. I don't think I really need to say a lot about eFootball. eFootball is a very, very big game. It's one of the most played games native to Android right now. Like a lot of people play it. I mean, I myself, I mean, I don't play as much as I used to, but I still play it. And I think a lot of people still do. It's still a very, very big game and a very important game is how a lot of people unwind and spend their day. Now, once upon a time, eFootball was available on nearly every phone, from entry level to flagship, they all played eFootball. So what was different for this, like different categories of phones from entry level to flagship was the settings at which you can play at. I think that was the, the difference. But from 2023, all the way up till now, there have been some changes, some very key changes to eFootball that a lot of people are not keeping up to date with. And that's why it's 2024 now and I still keep getting this question despite the fact that I already have about three or four posts on, on, on you can search my website or you can just get on Google and type eFootball mobile system requirements and you see that I have covered this topic at length but I don't think I've really done so here on YouTube so that's why I am coming over here to do so. So if you want to play eFootball you need to know that the eFootball of now is not the eFootball of before because I see that a lot of people haven't really gotten out of that mindset of all games should play, all phones are the same. Just pick one and buy one and play and choose. No, unfortunately, it's not the same. Android has matured, Android has changed. Apps and games are changing along to their maturing, they are getting more sophisticated, they are getting more advanced, and they need better hardware to run. So you need to understand this as well. So in 2022, Konami moved their software from 32-bit software to 64-bit software. Now, for those people who do not know this, I'm going to start with the software part of things. I've already started anyway, I did not want to waste any time. The software part of this, if you're going to run eFootball, there are three key things you need to know. The first one being the software part, the second one being the processor, the SOC, and the third one being RAM. So let's start with the software part. Now, a lot of people should know this, but if you don't know this, I'm going to mention this. Android has two varieties, two flavors, right? The first one being 32-bit Android, the second one being 64-bit Android. 32-bit Android is the older version and the lighter version. It's what you call Android Go or, you know, whatever name that they choose to call it. Now, 32-bit Android is very limited in what the amount of instructions and the amount of stuff that it can do. So that's why most of the time, a lot of people are moving away from 32-bit Android to the newer version, to the more advanced version that can run more complex apps, that can handle more instructions, which is 64-bit Android. So 32-bit Android is mostly left for weaker processors and entry-level phones, because entry-level phones can't do much beyond communication and playing Candy Crush. Even Candy Crush nowadays, sometimes the way I'm saying it, you probably move over to 64-bit, but that one is an aside. E-Football only runs on 64-bit Android. So if you are going to be buying a phone, you have to make sure that that phone is running 64-bit Android. It is very, very, it is of the essence. Without 64-bit Android, eFootball will not work. I have argued this thing with some people, even on my own website. They come to my website to argue with me. That's the funniest part of the whole thing. I mean, how can you go to someone's website and argue with them? But they, do, they come to my website to argue with me. So it's actually quite funny eFootball will not run on anything that has got to do with 32-bit software. So if you want to know, if you already have a phone that does not run eFootball, you can simply download an app called DevCheck, right? And then, you know, enter inside and go to software, the software tab in the DevCheck app, and you'll see it there written clearly as day, 32-bit Android or 32-bit, right? It won't run. There's no magic. Forget about whatever people tell you. There's no magic. It will not run. So if you are getting a phone, 
first and very foremost make sure that the phone runs 64-bit android yeah you can check it by you know i don't know jesse marina and key movie i think i prefer key movie most of the time to check phones before buying or before recommending for people because key movie will show you that this phone is 64 bits or it's 32 bits jesse marina doesn't really sometimes they do most times they don't so keep that in mind so that's the software part let's move on to the second part the processor the soc the soc is the you know the hardware on board that actually processes my <laughs> my primary school students used to define a cpu as a part of the computer that processes and stores data <laughs> once upon a time anyway but the the soc on board is the part of the phone right that processes apps very very important now it needs to have a certain level of performance a certain level of processing power to be able to run certain apps so even if your device does have 64-bit android software even if it does have you are going to need a certain level of performance to guarantee you a certain level of gameplay for example if you are going with budget or lower mid-range processors you are going to be you're going to have to play at low settings or standard settings at 30 fps depending on the smartphone that you've got if your smartphone has a processor for example the lowest i would advise is the unisoc t606 as lowest it's the very bottom right unisoc t606 i have a post ranking on google you can just simply google top 100 smartphone socs top 100 smartphone socs right top 100 smartphone socs and anything below 110 115 i probably wouldn't advise that but do you i'm only here to give you advice i'm not here to tell you what to do i'm just here to give you advice and not command you so it's very important anything below t606 is going to struggle so yeah g85 g88 okay um t618 snapdragon 685 686 785 snapdragon 2g for example helio g99 it gets even better all the way up so you should check the processor on your smartphone anything below t606 not advisable the higher you go the better the performance you get it's just that simple so make sure that first things first that your smartphone runs 64 bit android and secondly you get a decent processor lowest being t606 Average ones being Helio G85, Helio G88, Snapdragon 680. You can get even better performance from Helio G99, Dimensity 6080, Snapdragon 732G, even the older 720G will do fine. But if you want even more performance, you, you go higher. You know, Dimensity 7200, for example. Yeah. Uh, Dimensity um, 8020, 8050, Snapdragon 7 Gen 1, 6 Gen 1, 7S Gen 2. And so on and so forth you get better performance as you go along keep in mind that smartphones are more expensive so if you want better performance you're going to need to spend more and then finally the very last one on the list ram please get at least four gigs of ram four gigs of ram if you can get six gigs of ram even better right four gigs of ram this is because the eFootball app contains or rather contains a lot of files and data that the soc will need to process so roughly roughly eFootball can use up anything over 2.5 close to 3 gigs of ram so you need to have enough ram to be able to accommodate the game and then run it very fluently otherwise the game may crash whilst you are playing it stuttering crashing and all that just Keep those in mind. So these are the three most important things you need to know about eFootball. Very first thing, you need a phone with 64-bit Android. The second thing is that you need a very decent processor. And finally, you need four gigs of RAM. So now on to the next question. Jeff, my phone, I already, I've already bought it. It doesn't run eFootball. I've tried everything. I've tried to sideload up. There is nothing you can do, my brother. There's nothing you can do, my sister. The only thing you can do is sell off the phone um probably at a loss um recoup whatever you can and then get a better one that complies with this stuff that i have mentioned but the previous phone that you've got that doesn't run i don't want to mention any names so that nobody's saying i'm demarketing them 
um, the phone that you've got currently that doesn't support eFootball will not support eFootball. I see people told me, I think that was last year, like, Jeff, when eFootball 2024 comes out, she, all our phones that were no longer supported, they would find a fix for it. No! The world is moving on. Nobody's going to go back. If you've got a 32-bit Android phone, I am sorry. The world is moving on without you, unfortunately. There are still games you can play. I mean, Call of Duty and PUBG Mobile still caters to phones using 32-bit Android software. Yeah, but most of their new features will be on the 64-bit side. And so you're going to be missing out on a lot of stuff. It's just how it is. If you've got an older phone that doesn't run eFootball now, it wouldn't run it anymore in the future because Konami has noticed that even if they don't make this app available for phones with 32-bit Android software, it's not going to change anything. And so far, it hasn't. So if you've gotten an old phone like that, just count your losses, let it go, and then get a better one. So that's just about it. I think I have covered this topic well enough. Again, one more time, 64-bit Android software, decent processor, four gigs of RAM. That's all you need. That is all you need. T606, Unisoc T606 and above. I have a top 100 smartphone processor list. You can Google it or you can just go to inquisitiveuniverse.com and then you know type for top 100 smartphone processors and you'd find the list there. I keep it updated all the time. So yeah, with that, I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for coming. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. It's stuff like this that helps more channels like mine grow. Thank you very much for coming and I'll see you.